Assalamu alaikum. This presentation is on a fundamental mechanical property of the vocal folds, the understanding of which is essential in the understanding of the voice production mechanism. It's the vocal fold stiffness. The vocal fold stiffness refers to the sum total of the elastic mechanical properties of the five layers of the vocal fold. Because the vocal fold is not a homogeneous structure. It's multi-layered, formed of five different layers with different elastic properties, including muscle, the vocalis, thyroarytenoides, the collagen fibers in the deeper part of the lamina propria, the uh, collagen and the elastic fibers and the intermediate layers some elastic fibers and extracellular material in ring and space, and of course the envelope, the epithelial cover of the vocal folds. The uh, different mechanical properties provide numerous possibilities of different combinations of elastic properties, leading to different voice source characteristics. All objects or structures have an inherent mechanical property that is intrinsic in the material of the object or the structure. It's the way it resists deformation, like stretching or compression, when a force is applied to it. Stress is defined as the force applied to the object to cause its deformation, either stretching or compression, divided by the surface area of the uh, object or the structure perpendicular to the direction of the applied force. Strain quantifies the amount of the uh, deformation, the, either the stretch or the compression after applying certain stress. So stress is uh, uh, mathematically the force over the surface area and strain is the amount of deformation divided by the whole length so it's a relative deformation the ratio between stress applied to an object and strain the result of the application of the stress is called the young's modulus and reflect the elasticity of the material of that object or uh, structure uh, young's module is the stress divided by the strain. Here are some examples of the elastic modulus of several materials together with the densities and the ultimate strength which is the point at which the material would break. Large elastic modulus value would tolerate stress better and show only little strain, little compression or little stretch when certain strain when a certain stress is applied to it compared to uh, materials of very low elastic modulus like polystyrene for example in which the um, small elastic modulus means that the stress can produce large strain stress on a rubber band would produce large strain like maximum stretch. The same amount of stress, if applied to steel, would only produce a very small uh, deformation, change in the length of the steel bar. In between steel and, and polystyrene, there are other materials, including, for example, bone, including glass, including concrete, and different other materials in between the uh, two extremes. Generally, the greater the stress, the greater the strain, and the proportionality constant between the two, between the stress in here and the strain is there, is the Young's elastic modulus. But the relationship does not have to be linear all the time, with some increase in the stress causing a corresponding increase in the strain. The relationship can be also nonlinear, like in this graph, which shows the stress 
strain curve of the vocal cords. It's non-linear because in one segment, the relationship between the stress and the strain is different from another segment. You could see here that a large uh, amount of strain is produced by a small uh, increase in the stress and vice versa here, large amount of stress is required to produce only a small increase in the strain. This type of a relationship between stress and strain is therefore called nonlinear. This is a typical graph of the stress on the y-axis. Again, it's the strain on the x-axis relationship for the materials of the vocal folds. Demonstrating how forces ascending magnitude of forces on the vocal fold can cause stretching or compression uh, of the vocal folds heterogeneous tissues. The slope of the curve, the tangent line on the slope of the curve, quantifies the stiffness of the vocal fold, how it resists deformation, stretching or compression. The plot shows that the vocal folds exhibit three mechanical properties. The stiffness is not linear, it's a non-linear as we have just discussed, and the strain is not equal in all directions, that another property, and the vocal fold has also some viscoelastic behavior, as we are going to discuss in the next few slides. The first mechanical property is the nonlinear stiffness. Stiffness here is the tangent line to the curve, to the stress strain curve. You would see in the initial uh, segment of the curve, the slope is very gradual. You need to stretch the vocal folds a lot in the strain direction. Um, with only a very small amount of stress, of applied force. There will be a small amount of stress for a large amount of strain, whereas in the other segments uh, of the vocal fold cycle, towards the end of the cycle, large amounts of stress is required to produce small amounts of strain. So that's why it's a nonlinear uh, stiffness. Because of this nonlinear uh, stiffness of the vocal folds, changing the vocal fold length would also lead to changes in the vocal fold stiffness. If the material is linear, if the vocal fold material is linear, then there would be no such thing like increase in the stress when the length is uh, increased. This property, this nonlinear stiffness, can therefore be used to regulate the vocal fold stiffness and tension through a vocal fold elongation or shortening. This is important in the control of the fundamental frequency of the vocal folds vibration. The second mechanical property is the anisotropic stiffness, that is to say, the stiffness of the vocal fold tissue is not uniform in all directions. The stiffness is much higher in the anteroposterior direction than it is in the transverse direction. And the transverse direction is much easier to move the vocal folds in the transverse direction because of the decreased stiffness compared to moving it in the anteroposterior direction. It has something to do with the anteroposterior alignment of the collagen fibers, the elastic fibers, and the muscle fibers in the anteroposterior direction. The young modulus in the anteroposterior direction of the cover layer is more than 10 times that of the transverse plane. We know that uh, a higher Young's modulus would mean better toleration of stress, there will be small amount of uh, strain 
uh, with a higher modulus in the anteroposterior direction than it is when the much smaller uh, Young's modulus in the transverse direction. This uh, anisotropic uh, stiffness of the vocal fold has two important uh, applications. This stiffness facilitates the medial to lateral motion of the vocal cord in the transverse direction and also helps in completing the glottal closure during phonation, as we shall uh, see later. These are the two properties related to the uh, non-uniform distribution of stress in the vocal fold material. The third property of the vocal fold stiffness is its viscous behavior. You can see here that the uh, stress strain curve for loading of the vocal fold, stretching it or compressing it, is different than the graph while uh, unloading when, when it is returned back to its uh, neutral position. The stress is typically higher during the loading than it is during the unloading. This is basically due to the viscous behavior of the vocal fold material. Now we explore how the vocal fold stiffness that's the mechanical property of the vocal fold, affects another mechanical property that is the natural vibrating frequencies of the vocal folds, its eigenfrequency. All structures or objects, including the vocal folds, have a natural vibrating frequency. These are the frequencies at which the structure would tend to vibrate if subjected to a certain uh, applied Force. These frequencies, the natural vibrating frequencies, depends on the vibrating mass of the structure and the stiffness of the structure, and how the mass and the stiffness are distributed along the geometry of the vibrating object or the structure. So mass of the structure, stiffness, and how they are distributed in the structure itself geometrically. Generally speaking, a stiffer uh, structure, that is higher uh, elastic modulus for a structure, would tend to have uh, to increase the natural uh, vibrating frequency of that structure. The fundamental frequency, the F0 of the vibrating vocal folds, would depend on several factors. These factors are not completely independent because they affect each other in several ways. They interplay to produce the selected uh, and required fundamental frequency. Um, these factors include the natural vibrating frequency of the vocal folds, its eigenfrequency, it also includes the stiffness of the vocal folds, uh, which affects in, in turn the eigenfrequency. It includes the vibrating vocal fold mass and how this mass is distributed along the length of the vocal fold and also the depth of the vocal fold and its contact mod during closing the vocal folds and the extent and the duration of the closing uh, part of the vibratory cycle. So all these factors interplay to produce a certain selected fundamental frequency. They interplay in different ways. To give you an example, uh, stretching the vocal folds by, for example, uh, the cricothyroid uh, activation would stretch the length of the vocal fold, this should uh, decrease the fundamental frequency because increasing of the length would increase, decrease the fundamental frequency. But on the other hand, the activation of the cricothyroid would increase the stiffness and the tension in the anteroposterior direction of the vocal fold. And the effect of the increase in the stiffness would outweigh the effect of the increase in length. So the um, ultimate 
uh, result would be that the, uh, the fundamental frequency would actually increase. And finally, the other way the vocal fold stiffness can modulate and adjust the voice produced by the vocal fold is through the effect of the anisotropic stiffness on the glottal closure. The anisotropic stiffness of the vocal fold optimizes the way the vocal fold closes during uh, phonation. The way the uh, fibers are aligned in the anteroposterior direction improves the glottal closure and also the way the lamina propria has these fibers is between the core of the vocal fold the muscular part and the surface the superficial uh, position of the aligned fibers also improves the vocal fold glottal closure even the epithelial layer, the envelope of the vocal fold, the stiffness of this uh, epithelial envelope also improves the glottal closure and um, improves the duration of the glottic closure and allows vibration for a considerably longer closed period. By this, we come to the end on this presentation on the vocal fold stiffness. Salaamu Alaikum.